In one of our first contracts, we consulted with a school district that was not doing great academically. We could not understand why they needed help because the leadership in place had advanced degrees from major universities. However, when you looked at the literacy rate, graduation rate, and an ACT scores, you would have never known it. But when I made it to my meeting with one of the teachers, immediately I understood why. I can usually tell what the culture is like within the organization by examining the people that are not in leadership position. They tell me everything I need to know by simply observing them and how they plan their day. Leadership, whether good or bad, trickles down all the way to the micro level. It forms the direction of the entire organization. So when it comes to leadership roles, there are a few things to consider. So with that being said, my name is Dominic Lawson and welcome to The Startup Life. Let's begin. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother... Welcome Startup Nation. I hope you're ready to receive some value today. As you know, the Startup Life is brought to you by OWLS. If you're a high impact organization, school, small business, or nonprofit, and you are in need of professional development or strategy in your organization, you can reach OWLS at 901-857-4818 or our website at www.askowlsllc.com. All right, Startup Nation. So based on that opening monologue, you can tell we're going to focus on leadership today. Uh, There's a popular misconception that just because you get a promotion or you receive a new title in an organization, that that automatically makes you a great leader. That's definitely not the case. And for my entrepreneurs who are building a team, you definitely want to exhibit leadership qualities because if you don't, your team will, will know it. Uh, it will affect customer service. And last but not least, it will affect your bottom line in a negative way. And as an entrepreneur, you definitely don't want that. So there's many different attributes of leadership, but we're going to focus on four things we think you should key on. So in our first segment, we'll talk about how great leaders inspire their team. Next, uh, in the second segment, we'll talk about open mindedness, how uh, great leaders are always willing to look for the next great idea outside of their head, whether it comes from their team, whether it comes from professional development, or even if it just comes from something outside of their industry. Great ideas can come from basically anywhere, and great leaders know that. Next, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about how great leaders empower their team. They set their team up for success. You definitely don't want to miss that one. Next, We'll uh, introduce a brand new segment called What Can We Learn From This? Basically, we'll take news uh, from the business world that recently happened, and uh, we'll just talk about how maybe we can learn from that news. Lastly, we'll talk about communication, uh, how great leaders communicate with their team. They let them know what's going on, and they're extremely transparent. So that's kind of the rundown today, and hey, let's get started. So how do great leaders inspire their team? Well, we've often seen like great, you know, examples of this, like in movies like 300 or Braveheart, where you have like this person kind of, you know, readying the troops for battle. Right. And it's very similar uh, in entrepreneurship and in organizations. But one thing that one thing that uh, great leaders do to inspire their team is that for starters, they're grateful for their team. They appreciate their time. They value what they do. And they let them know this. Now, you don't have to always like throw employee appreciation parties or buy them lunch, even though those type of things go a long way. A lot of times just uh, sit down and listen to them, listen to uh, their ideas. More importantly, listen to concerns that they have. Great leaders are often able to inspire by just doing the simplest of things like that. Another thing great leaders do is that they have clear vision, clear vision. Okay. One of the greatest visionaries 
or inventors of our time, arguably, uh, was the late Steve Jobs. One thing he was able to do was to inspire not only us as consumers, but to inspire his team as well. And he had a very similar predictive format that uh, that I uh, that Simon Sinek, who has this great TED talk about it, uh, he had a great formula and able to do that. So um, if you're able to uh, check out YouTube, Simon Sinek, he has this great YouTube, uh, I'm sorry, this great TED, TED talk uh, about start with why. He talks about how uh, oftentimes when we're trying to not just inspire a team, but we're trying to, as entrepreneurs, when we're trying to sell something to somebody, we always focus on what we do, how we do it, and then why we do it. And one of the great things that Steve Jobs at Apple was able to do was to flip the script. Basically talk about why we do something, how we do it, and what we do. And so basically, the thing is, the reason that Apple is so popular or the reason that people buy Apple products is not really because, you know, the product is superior, even though I firmly believe that it is. But honestly, people buy Apple for what it is, for what, you know, what, for what Apple believes that it is. So when you hear things like when Apple says that they think different, they think outside the box, people can identify with that, whether it be artists, whether it be entrepreneurs, whether it be almost anybody. And with that being said, uh, we at Owls had recently participated in a pitch competition that we won. And a lot of people... Um, came up to us afterwards and was asking us, how did you do it? Um, kind of like a uh, somebody who plays professional sports. We looked at film before we actually uh, gave our pitch. Now, the pitch was, you know, the competition was kind of like a shark, shark Tank style pitch competition. It was extremely fun. I very uh, much highly recommend it for my entrepreneurs if you're trying to get some capital in your business to enter pitch competitions. But what we did was we looked at that TED Talk that, we, that I mentioned earlier and we juxtaposed that to an Apple news conference uh, that Steve Jobs would give when, when he was alive. And we really focused on why we did something, how we do it, and then what you know we actually do at Owls. And it was actually beneficial because, like I said, we won. But we were able to inspire not only the people in, in the panel, Shark Tank style panel, but we were also able to inspire people in the room and they always always ask they were asking us for business cards. One person actually asked if we were looking for investors. And so when you're able to inspire a team, it resonates not just with your team, but it resonates throughout uh, out the, you know your industry and your space and with your customers ultimately. And that can be extremely beneficial. Not only in the organization, if you're a nine to fiver, but also in your business for my entrepreneurs. Next, I want to focus on is how leaders are open minded. Great leaders are always looking for the next idea or great ideas. And they always know that you can get it in your industry from your team or you can get a great idea from somebody or something outside of your industry. Great leaders know that, you know, a great idea is just a great idea. And if you can implement it some kind of way in your business or in your organization, you should go for it and you should do that. Also, great leaders are willing to make mistakes. You know, a lot of times when we are in our business, we're afraid to make those mistakes. But what you have to realize, you know, like I said in a previous show, is that those are teachable moments. You may understand or realize that maybe that idea was just ahead of its time and the market just wasn't ready for it yet. Or maybe it just wasn't ready. It wasn't you know, a right fit for you and your team. Or maybe you just need to tweak it a little bit. So make those mistakes. There, There's beauty in, you know, in the mistakes. Mistakes are an asset. Like I said, they are truly and they honestly are teachable moments. Also, great leaders that are open minded are honest with themselves and your team. Look, we all have limitations and that's OK, um, because acknowledging those limitations is not like, you know, a sign of weakness It's actually a sign of strength. And one of the things that that uh, Sarah Blakely, if you don't know who Sarah Blakely is, she's the founder of uh, Spanx. She created Spanx 
she tells this wonderful story of how she was going into a meeting and she didn't have something kind of form fitting to go underneath her dress. But anyway, one thing you'll realize when it comes to her titles, well, when her title is that it says founder of Spanx. It doesn't necessarily mean founder and CEO, because in an interview, she says that, you know, entrepreneurs need to understand that it's OK to hire your weakness. And so basically what she's saying is that, look, when you're scaling your business, you definitely want to do as many things that you can do you know, with limited personnel as you can. However, there comes a point when you're scaling your business that you're going to need to hire somebody. You're going to need to hire somebody with a certain expertise to get your business to where you're trying to go. And so she, entrepreneurs like her, hire their weakness. They hire people who are experts in what they lack. And that's okay. So being vulnerable and being honest with yourself and your team allows you to scale properly if you're an entrepreneur, but it also allows you if you're a nine to fiver and you have a team to move forward correctly because putting people, you know, like we mentioned earlier, putting people in uh, places to succeed is extremely important. Also, Great leaders who are open-minded are willing to let go of control. They don't micromanage. Look, there comes a, a time and a place to micromanage. So I'm not going to say like, you know, just totally get rid of that practice. However, most people can't just, they just hate it. Okay, let's just be honest. They hate being micromanaged. You standing over their shoulder or you take that whole attitude. Well, if it's going to, you know, if it's going to be done right, I might as well do it myself. And as an entrepreneur, we we're we tend to be pretty bad about that. We really we really are, and we kind of have to get over that. But that comes with, through the hiring process to make sure that you're hiring the right person to do the job right. Like we just mentioned earlier, hiring your weakness. You obviously hired that person because you needed them, so you kind of have to let them do their job. So you can't be hovering over them all the time and just like you know just making them feel uncomfortable because if you're hovering over all the hovering over them all the time and you're making them feel uncomfortable they're not going to do their job to their highest capability and that's the last thing you want uh in your business so definitely you want to make sure that you know uh that great leaders that are open-minded they let go of control they let people flourish in you know in their role so uh we're going to take a quick break I hope you're getting some great value so far. And with that being said, my name is Dominic Lawson, and this is The Startup Life. educator looking for great resources then look no further than the owls e-commerce store on teachers pay teachers search for the name teaching with owls owls has great lessons based on great short stories such as kate choppin's the story of an hour and ecker allen poe's the mask of the red death and don't worry teachers all lessons are common core aligned let's continue so another attribute of a great leader is one that is willing to or knows that they have to empower their team for starters, in order to do that, you must know the strengths and weaknesses of your team. So how do you do that? Basically, you have to talk to them, observe them, give them feedback because everybody loves feedback. Everybody wants to know what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, what they can improve on. So that's a great way to empower your team. Also, don't babysit your team members. 
if you give them a task or a job to do or you've hired them uh, for a role in your business or in your organization, don't babysit them. Don't don't hold their hand. Because the last thing you're going to you want to do is to stunt their growth. So if you hire somebody for a role and you're always like, come on, Jimmy, this is how we do it, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. You know, we can do this. Come on. I mean, there comes a place where you may need to do a little bit more training or professional development. And there's another thing of just, you know, standing in their way of growth and babysitting them is definitely not empowering them. So. Trying to avoid that when you're in uh, when you're in a leadership role. Also, another thing your team will like is that they know that there is a path for advancement. I know a lot of times as entrepreneurs, great talent is hard to come by. But the last thing you want to do is to stop somebody from growing. Sometimes when you hire a great candidate for a role and they do an excellent job in that role, sometimes they they outgrow that role. And that's okay because, you know, and if you can hire them and, you know, create a role for them or promote them within, that's awesome. Because any team member will tell you that if they feel that there's no room for advancement, the morale is going to, you know, is is going to stink. Let's just be honest. The morale is going to stink and they're not going to do a great job in the current role because there's no incentive. There's no there's no path. Uh, upward mobility, if you will. So also, you know, uh, you know, like I said, just as, make sure you establish that there is a, a path of advancement for your team. Um, also, uh, in empowering your team members, always, you know, give them challenges, give them tasks that, you know, may be a little bit outside of what they normally do. Because for one, that, you know, it's great team building exercises, but also it forces them to think outside the box. Because, Great leaders create great leaders, okay? And so challenging them to do things outside of the norm or maybe even outside of their role allows them that, that, uh, that ability to grow in their role or maybe to grow out of the role to do something else within, uh, within the organization or maybe somewhere else. Like I said uh, earlier, you never want to stand in the way of somebody who may you know, think it's time to move on because... Like I said, be, let's be honest. Sometimes people just outgrow their role. Also, as leaders, when we're empowering our team, another the great thing you want to keep in mind is to let your team members know uh, how they're going to be measured or simply put, set the expectation. One thing that you can, you know, if you want, if you're looking to uh, to shoot down morale very quickly is to keep changing the rules of the game as the game is going along. So when you set the expectation up front, is already established like this is what I expect this is what I need you to do this is how we get from point A to point B and this is what I'm looking for as far as the quality of work when you get from point A to point B and team members not only appreciate that but they feel empowered they feel like you're trying to set them up for success like we said earlier but they feel empowered in order to not just take on the task but even probably take the task on and provide even more value and more quality than you were than you initially thought. So they're now you're setting that team member up to go beyond expectations. And when you're running a business or a team, that's a that's something you definitely want to happen. So before we move on to the last segment, like I said, we're gonna try a new segment, kind of stick it in between here, and we're gonna call it um, "What Can We Learn from This." I guess in the future we'll have some type of jingle or music to kind of set it up, but. For right now, let's just go from there. So recently in the news, John Stump, now former CEO of Wells Fargo, uh, stepped down due to uh, the Wells Fargo scandal. Now, this actually kind of hits home for me a little bit because I actually used to work at Wells Fargo. So for those of you who didn't really know what was going on, basically, um, we had uh, team members at Wells Fargo who were opening accounts that people... Uh, that customers didn't know about. They were opening credit cards that customers didn't know about. And so a lot of times when you're in a leadership role, it's not about what you do. It's about what happens on your watch. And that's kind of what happened with John Stump. It it almost goes back to what um, Reagan said in the 80s when he was talking about Iran-Contra, the buck stops with me. When you're in leadership, the buck does stop with you. 
So basically, when it came to Wells Fargo, now, like I said, I know firsthand because I was a banker at Wells Fargo. And so what would happen is that Wells Fargo would have these extremely high expectations or these quotas or these metrics that you had to hit. And so it made it it, it produced a culture that was extremely competitive. And I'm, I don't mean healthy com- competition. I mean, like extremely negative type of competition to where I have literally I literally saw when customers would come into the bank bankers would I literally saw a banker elbow another banker in the chest so he can get to that customer first the crazy thing is um like I said John Stump recently stepped down as CEO of Wells Fargo I honestly believe that he probably didn't have a clue that things like that were going on okay and sometimes in leadership, you can, you know, uh, not be aware of every single thing that goes on because, you know, after a while you become so big or even if you don't become big, you can't possibly be everywhere all the time. It's just not possible. However, when you're in a leadership role, you hire people, you know, to make sure certain li- things like that don't happen. And so, like I said earlier, that's why he ultimately had to step down. That's why Elizabeth Warren, when he was in front of the Senate, you know, kind of laid into him a little bit. And so, like I said, when you are in leadership, whether it be the president of the United States, CEO of a company, or whatever the case may be, you may not know all the, the willings and dealings of the everyday process that goes on in your business or in your organization. But no matter what happens, whether it be good or bad, if it happens on your watch, you're going to get credit for it, or at the very least, in this case, you're going to get the blame for it. And that leads us to our lag segment. Great leaders have the ability to communicate effectively to their team, to their customers, to their, uh, to their board members, or whoever the target audience is. Okay? And so that comes with transparency. That comes with giving great feedback. Let's focus on the feedback. When you're leading a team... They're always one to know feedback because the thing is they want to, like I said before, they want to know what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, what they can improve on, what can they stop doing, what they need to do more of. Because getting that feedback, um, constructive feedback, of course, allows them to do a better job in their role. It allows them uh, to feel empowered, like we'd said earlier, to feel empowered to do their role effectively. And so when you give that feedback, you're, you know, you're, you know, you're setting your team up for success. Also, when you have like, let's say you have a group meeting, right? They're able to speak to large groups. Leaders are able to speak to large groups as if they're speaking to an individual. What do I mean by that? Let me see if I can explain uh, with a, a brief story. It won't be long, I assure you. Uh, so recently we... Um, I consulted with a principal and she had a performance review and it was a performance review with her team members where her team members kind of, you know, rate her performance on certain things. And she explained to me how she spoke to her team as a group. Her numbers were low, but when she talked to her group as individuals, her percentages were very high. And I had to explain to this principal that, you know, people like to feel individualized, like you're talking to them. A lot of times when you're speaking to a group, things get lost in translations, things can get lost in the crowd. And so they don't feel like they're being heard. And so when great great leaders uh, and great communicators, and I guess there's another Ronald Reagan reference because he was considered the great communicator. um, Great leaders have the ability to talk to those people in a group setting, but make them feel as if you know they're individuals this is done with eye contact acknowledging what a person says like if a person has a suggestion or has a question you're you know you're uh, acknowledging them and their question not kind of like just answering it as a whole because like if you're answering their question in a group setting you're automatically answering as a whole you know to the whole group anyway so you might as well focus on that person while asking while answering the question and also, um, great leaders know their audience. You know, you, you know, great leaders know certain uh, words or phrases are, you know, are going to go over well or not go over well 
with uh, certain groups. This comes in extremely handy when it comes to politics. You know, um, for example, um, one of the things that um, I would explain to people when we talk about this current election, cy election cycle uh, when it comes to Donald Trump. And I was explaining how when you're in the the primary race of the elections, you can say certain things. OK, but when you go to the general election, your tone has to change because the same message that you were given to your base or in the primary cannot translate, you know, doesn't translate very well in the general election. So knowing that is extremely important. And so um, quick disclaimer, that's not uh, an endorsement of a certain candidate over another, just quickly explaining how in leadership communication is extremely important, especially the aspect of knowing your audience. And lastly, great leaders who communicate effectively are willing to accept accountability. And kind of using the example of the principal I was talking about earlier, um, they are willing to accept um, certain feedback from their team, even, you know, if the, those team members are subordinates. Accepting that accountability um, goes a long way to not just empower your team, but your team trusting you. When you are able to listen to what they have to say, take ownership, and then apply it, that can be something extremely powerful to move in your organization and your team forward. So what's the bottom line? Well, Basically, leadership is an extremely valuable asset in any organization. And as entrepreneurs, you need to have the right leadership in the proper channels and in the proper place in order to move your business forward. Great leadership can honestly be the difference between you being the next Apple or the next Nokia. So that's going to do it for this session of The Startup Life. We really hope you got extreme value in what we had to say today about leadership. If you want to let us know what you think about the show or would like to advertise on our show, let us know in the comments section. Also, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Owls LLC. And hey, if you have an idea, be about that life, the startup life.